Uh, thank you, Michael. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, slight adjustment here, upwards. Thanks. Um, uh, appreciate the opportunity of, uh, of addressing you. Great to see it uh, so well attended. Um, I, I was struck by the uh, attendance list. Um, I spent a good number of years um, on behalf of Gay Electric in the States um, and had cause to visit many conferences. Um, and I think it is indicative at the stage a business is at by who the attendees are. And it is very obvious to me that we are still on the fringes here in biomass and bioenergy. Because if you look at the attendees, we don't see any institutional investors. So we haven't grabbed the attention of the investment community. And we won't get anywhere unless we grab the attention of the investment community. Uh, biomass and bioenergy is capital intensive. And we go nowhere without money. And I've had the fortunate or unfortunate experience of spending uh, six or seven years um, traveling around the world, uh, inviting people to invest in Gay Electric and its uh, various projects. <clears throat> I, I thought for a while I was the uh, Gay Electric's resident frog kisser. Um, so much so I used to carry uh, mouthwash with me. Um, but it, it made me realize that although we're concentrating on projects, and I'll get into the presentation in a second, but I just want to uh, <clears throat> give you an indication from where I'm coming. I'm not a biomass or bioenergy expert in any uh, shape or form. Thankfully, we have very competent people here uh, in Gay Electric to do that. Where I am versed in is starting a business and bringing it from project to business. And I think that's... Uh, the message I'm trying to get across here today is that a lot of us are captured because, I'm particularly speaking to the developers, as you can guess, uh, a lot of us are, are enthralled by the, the, the prospect of bringing our project forward. But the reality is we get emotionally attached to the project, whereas we should be rising above that and looking at the business as a sustainable business. A project is not a business. You should, you, you, is, there are times when you have to say, no, I'm not going any further with this project. I'm putting good money after bad. And it's very hard to do that. But that's when you mature from a project to a business, when you realize that this is not, the business is healthy or it has a prospect uh, of being healthy. And I, I'm suggesting that that's where the bioenergy, biomass business is. <clears throat> but you can't get married to projects because projects can go sour. Uh, they can have binary outcomes, and investors hate binary outcomes. They hate the fact that they can lose money. They will tell you that they're interested in development. They tell you they're interested in risk. They're not interested in development. They're not interested in risk. They're interested in reward. But before reward, they're not going to lose money. So we all have to put on what I call the big boy pants and realize that we are at the moment on the outside of the energy business. We're not in the mainstream and we're not in the mainstream because we're not attracting investment. And we all know the reasons for that. So this isn't a, a blame game. I'm just suggesting to you that we do think where we should be. Like next year's conference, should we have Black Rocks in the audience? Should we have the Invest Techs in the audience? They're not in the audience. Why are they not in the audience? Because it's not a mainstream investable business yet. OK, sorry, now with the formal. All right, this is Gay Electric's mission. Um, this is uh, corporate speak, so I'll translate it for you. Uh, basically, what Gay Electric sees itself doing is enabling uh, the power business or the energy business to get to the next stage in Ireland. And it sounds a bit altruistic. We intend to make money from it as well, so don't worry about that. But where we're going in the business, and I, I think it's well worthwhile if you just take out your mobile phone for a minute and contemplate what you can do on that today and go back 15 years ago when you were using your handwritten diaries, your little one that you were waiting for for Christmas from AIB or Bank of Ireland or whoever. It's a thing of the past. We, we think it's archaic. Well, I'm suggesting to you in 10 years' time, 
when you look back on where the energy business was in 2016 in Ireland, it was archaic. So what we're going to see, and it's going to be, there's several dynamics at work here, but we are going to see regional generation. Biomass speaks particularly well to that. We are going to see prosumer, which is a really ugly word, but you're going to have to get used to it, where consumers, industrial and private uh, residences, produce their own energy. So it's going to be turned on its head, no different than your Nokia mo mobile phone that weighed half a ton is now this little thing and it includes a laptop in it. That's the seismic change you're going to see in energy. And bear that in mind and please figure out where bioenergy is fitting in that. To me, it speaks to it very well because it is a regionally based business. It transport is a big part of it. So you cut down on transport substantially by having regional production and regional generation. So there's lots of reasons why bioenergy is an essential part of this. Um, this is our model. Uh, we are originally a wind developer, and I'll speak a little bit of our history. I hope you, you can draw analogies to what you're doing at the moment. Uh, we started 12 years ago as wind developers primarily. We branched into storage in 2006. Uh, we have uh, migrated into uh, bioenergy and solar uh, since two 2014. Along the way, we also went into energy markets. Um, and this graph or this sketch sort of speaks to what, what, what we're trying to do or what we think we have achieved in, in many ways. So on the left hand side, I have the wind energy business. I have the solar energy and the bioenergy. And they are all capable of generation at volume. Next, I have energy storage and trading and markets. And that's trading and markets in energy. And we see them as the glue in terms of being able to achieve 100% green. You need to be able to trade your energy to ensure that you can mix and match, because a lot of the generation we're talking about is intermittent. Likewise, you need to be able to store your energy, because otherwise you're back to fossil fuel. And if our ambition is ultimately to get to green and sustainable energy, we need an efficient energy market, and we need an efficient storage technologies. And I say technologies, plural. And then lastly, the term we're using is your energy. Well, that speaks to prosumer, i.e., if it's a pharma down in West Cork, um, it, it has a biomass plant on it, it's producing electricity. When it's overproducing, it can export it to the market. Likewise, solar panels on ceilings. All of these energy producers, production generation can speak to each other. And we think, unless you have the vision of covering across the thing, you're not getting the whole picture. So I'm suggesting to you, in 10 years' time, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see grid generation. You're going to see an efficient energy market, efficient storage technologies. And you're going to see the consumer producing and generating electricity and selling it back into the grid and buying it and basically optimizing it. The net result of all of that is that we now are taking 100% efficiency into our system. We all know what, what the slings and arrows AirGrid brought upon themselves with trying to, to extend the, the network. The reality is that if we do this efficiently, we don't need to increase the network. We just need to maximize and optimize it. This is now back to Gay Electric. So Gay Electric, here's three. We have 92 people working with us. Or I was going to say 92 people employed, most of them working. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's a, the shareholder makeup. Uh, we have a private family trust there. who's 25% of the company, and that was very, very, very important to us. It gave us a stable basis. Um, we have 25% of our company owned by what were high net worth individuals during the Celtic Tiger. Uh, uh, some of them um, referred to it as fun money as they invested. And now they refer to it as their only money. <laughs> um, and then management um, is 50%. Is, uh, 
And that management is uh, Brendan, uh, a lot of you know, Brendan McGrath, my brother, uh, Barry Gavin, and myself. And uh, I was reminded of uh, Dennis Brosnan one time saying that it takes three types of people to, uh, to make a, a business. Um, you have a visionary, a businessman, and a bollocks. You figure out who I am. <laughs> Uh, staff qualification. Staff qualification is a big part of our, our business. We employ really, really good people. It would warm your heart to see the level of education these people have and the thirst they have for work. It would warm your heart. Um, you can see we five percent of our company have uh, a leaving cert. Again, you're talking to one of them. Um, the rest of them actually have real qualifications and that has been a big part of it. The last thing I'd say to you about that is the geographic spread. Geographic spread of the business was very important to us because we learned what other countries were doing. And the US in particular is a very unforgiving uh, energy market. And it is the way Europe is going. So it doesn't take an awful lot for us to educate ourselves. And I'd say that to you here sitting here now. Learn what other countries are doing and why are they doing it that way. And is that the way Ireland should do it? And should you be getting ready for it? The other thing I did, this is very useful. Again, uh, we started as a company with no balance sheet. And the best thing to do was to partner with somebody who has. Um, so we formed very good relationships. Uh, our wind technology was Enercon, very strong company. Strobart on the biomass in the UK. Uh, Siemens on the, the um, storage business. And uh, on finances, we, we got it from Proventus and uh, Nord and Blue Bay, <coughs> and storage again from Tesla. And again, that should speak to you. If you look at those names, there is no Irish names on that. You know, it, it, it does ask you. We've been 12 years in business. All our partners are from a field. The exception, you could say, is, is Blue Bay, who managed some of ISAF's money and thankfully did invest in us in a MES uh, strip. Um, but they're owned by RBC. So we would ask ourselves that we're hoping to add uh, AIB to that list shortly. But we're 12 years in existence, and most of our strategic partners are not Irish. This is talking to our, our competencies. Sorry, the slide is so small, but basically, our model was somewhat different than a lot of developers. We built our, our, in, our disciplines in-house rather than using consultants. Now, we still use consultants, but we try to, to uh, bring in an institutional knowledge. So whilst we're using uh, uh, consultants, we make sure that we build, we have that discipline in-house as well. And it has been a major differentiating factor. Here's, um, I've been reminded, by the way, that, that we're, uh, I, I'm under the cosh time-wise. Um, this is our platform in Ireland. I don't need to go through to it, but one highlight I haven't read there is that we raised 500 million in senior and MES debt re relatively recently. Again, we did that in the UK and abroad, uh, not in Ireland. That, that was the making uh, the differentiating factor of our company. If I, if I told you, and, and particularly in biomass where it's so hard to finance, our long-term finance on euro is 3.2 fixed for 19 and a half years. Now, that was an overnight success again after 12 years. It took us that long to get there. But that's where this business has to go. And you can only do this by not treating the business as project-led, treating it as a business-led business. Um, Energy storage, again, the only uh, thing I suggest there is that you have to have a complete understanding of the technology. You need to show, we have gone through a huge array of battery technologies. We've ended up with Tesla and one other partner. It's really important that you get your technology right. And the solar pipeline, again, just to talk to you very quickly on that, in, in relation to the investing in, in uh, bioenergy, what are the cost reductions? Everything is going towards merchant, and yet we haven't in the bioenergy even got our supports in place yet. Wind is going towards merchant, solar is going towards merchant. What are the improvements that can be brought to bioenergy? Because ultimately that's what has to happen. It has to be able to stand on its own two feet. 
we're a, way, we're a good way away from that at the moment, but we do have to address it. Um, I skipped to this. The, the, the energy trading, we stopped relying on traditional PPAs. We don't have any PPAs with, with, uh, on our latest contracts with, with, with the ESBs or the Viridians or energy, any of them. We, we set up our own energy trading because it made us the authors of our own fortune or misfortune, as the case may be. Thankfully, it has stood to us. And again, that is something that we are now offering to third party uh, producers, whether it's uh, biomass, wind, or, uh, or solar. And I'm going to use this as my last slide because I'm under the, the, under the cash. But this is trying to get you to, to fix on where this market is going. So if you see at the top, we have the corporate offering uh, behind the meter on PPAs. Like if you look at the announcements from Amazon, from Facebook, they are all insisting on 100% green. Right? And at the moment, you have people doing synthetic deals uh, saying that they're green energy supplies. The reality is we will not attract foreign divest, uh, direct investment on a regular basis unless we have a dispatchable green uh, production, and biomass is that. So I see solar, bioenergy, and energy storage. I see the markets in the middle, and I see behind the meter micro wind solar energy and bioenergy and I think that that is your future and you have to understand that that's where you fit in and you have to move your mentality from from being project-led to being business-led so uh, at that I'll leave it over to you thank you